Well, thank you, Barb and Shirley, for bringing us those readings. Um, and it just made me think, here we are, the last Sunday before Advent, not far to go before we start lighting our Advent calend candles. Next Sunday, we will start to see our church being decorated, ready for Christmas, as we anticipate the wonderful birth of Jesus the King throughout the six weeks of Advent, leading to the birth of Jesus, a baby, tiny and vulnerable to the world. And yet here we are talking about the death of Jesus. We observe the cruel end of his life, or more specifically, what the Roman Empire thought would be the end of his life. Little did they realize Jesus will live forever in our hearts and throughout our lives. Today we're reminded there is only one King, one Saviour, only one person who can truly save us, a King who was prepared to die for us. Now that's quite something, isn't it? You see, nowadays we think of kings such as the kings of England, King Canute, who commanded the tide not to come in. It did. Or King Henry VIII, who had a very colourful life, which led to the birth of the Church of England. Thank goodness, however, we don't worship a king like that, nor do we worship a king who stays in his ivory tower, who has made his power through rather unsavoury means or is safely removed from the suffering and despair of the world around him. No, our King of Kings is very approachable. He is a very different King, one full of love and forgiveness, a King who was prepared to be cruelly killed in order to save us, complete strangers hundreds of years later. This year, this week, we recognise that it was the Son of God, Jesus, who was born to become King of our hearts by dying on the cross for us. We've all heard the story before, the story of Jesus being placed on trial and sentenced to a criminal's death by crucifixion, followed by the long and arduous walk by carrying the cross to Golgotha, the nailing of his arms and legs to a cross, where he would hang in agony between two criminals who deserved their punishment. Not once or twice, but three times as he hangs on that cross, is Jesus told to save himself. In cruel mockery, the soldiers, the crowd, and one of the condemned criminals shouted to him, if you are the Messiah, why don't you save us and yourself too? thus causing the other criminal to rebuke them, saying, Jesus hasn't committed any crime. And you know what? Jesus could have done just that. Surely a God so powerful as to create the entire world and had the capacity to do so could, in an instance, escape the physical and emotional pain being inflicted upon his only son. Our king made a different choice and chose to remain on the cross and die to expose his vulnerability for us. And that decision made all the difference. We worship a God who is not afraid to show us his wounds, but to show us his vulnerability through his son Jesus, a king who would die for us. Remember when one of the criminals on the cross asked Jesus, Jesus, when you finally become king, will you remember me? The crucified Jesus turned to the criminal hanging next to him and said, I'm telling you this, you'll be with me in paradise this very day. The criminal in his final hour became a Christian and received his place with Jesus. Jesus is speaking to every one of us here today. Jesus died for us. Though he'd never met us, 
He was wounded because of the pain in the world. The people of the world, for us, we aren't perfect, but God loves us just as we are. We worship a king who is intimately present in our suffering because God is acutely aware of what that suffering means. The vulnerability of suffering for others. And that vulnerability is an inward power that comes through loving Jesus and caring for others as he did. I'll end this sermon with the following words I recently read from Brené Brown on the power of vulnerability. Vulnerability is the birthplace of love, belonging, joy, courage, empathy and creativity. If we want greater clarity in our purpose or deeper and more meaningful spiritual lives, vulnerability is the path. So let us follow the path of our wounded God by sharing in God's vulnerability and the vulnerability of Jesus with the assurance that Jesus, the King of Kings, loves each and every one of us here today and holds us all in his loving arms. Amen.